In the first episode of this series, we showed how the new images from the James Webb Space Telescope and older images from the Hubble Space Telescope both showed that the images of galaxies as we see them at large redshifts at high distances are too small for the formula of the Big Bang expanding universe hypothesis. Using those formula, the Big Bang says that these galaxies, which are as massive and luminous as the Milky Way galaxy that we live in, were tiny, hundreds of times smaller in radius than the present day Milky Way. In addition, the JWST images show that galaxies at all redshifts are smooth spirals for the majority and the collisions that the Big Bang hypothesis uses to expand these tiny galaxies to the size that we observe today simply didn't happen. Now already we've seen the people who support the Big Bang saying well we didn't really mean that we could explain everything in the evolution of the universe. We don't really try to explain the evolution of galaxy size. That's happening, obviously, not by collisions, but by some unknown process that grows these galaxies smoothly. Now, of course, what they're not telling you is that there is no physically possible process without collisions that can grow these galaxies in radius without also growing them in mass, which is something we don't observe. So that is going to have to be worked out. But the news gets worse for the Big Bang because it isn't just data from the JWST that's causing them problems. Almost every day there's data from other telescopes that's making these problems worse. And in the case of the size data, starting in June of this year, there was data from Earth-based telescope called ALMA, which is a huge array of radio telescopes in the Atacama Desert in Chile, that showed there is an independent measure of radius that contradicts the predictions of the Big Bang. Now, these are not the same galaxies as JWST images are looking at. This is a different part of the sky, and these galaxies are considerably closer. So the redshifts for these galaxies are four or five, while for the most distant galaxies that JWST observes, the redshifts are eight to 12. So, with the ALMA telescope, scientists can see the spectra produced by large clouds of gas that surround these distant galaxies. And what you see here is spectra that have been obtained of a certain galaxy by ALMA. And the height of the spectra, the amplitude of the spectra, is a direct measurement of the mass of the gas that's producing these spectra in the galaxies. Now, because this depends on the luminosity of the galaxy, which as we've explained in earlier videos, does not really depend on whether the universe is expanding or not. That measurement is independent of the question of expansion. Now, from the width of these uh, lines, we can measure the velocity at which the gas is moving because the velocity shifts the light to the red on one side and shifts it to the blue on the other. And this Doppler shift also does not depend on whether the universe is expanding or not. Well, if you have the mass of a gravitating object which is spinning around, and you have the velocity at which it's 
rotate. And by this simple formula, derived directly from Newton's law of gravitation, you can get the minimum radius that the object must have. Now, why minimum? Because there may be other forces that hold the uh, object together, such as magnetic forces or, if you believe in it, dark matter. But this is the minimum radius that it has to have with this amount of mass and with this velocity. Well, with ALMA, we can also observe what the angular radius of these galaxies are, of the cloud of gas that's producing these spectra. And this second graph I formed using the best and most accurately observed galaxies in what is called the Alpine Survey of Galaxies. So I didn't pick these because they proved my point. These are the ones that have the least error in their observations. And roughly the size of the error is indicated by the size of these dots. Well, if you plot the minimum radius, the independent measurement of the minimum radius, you get these red dots, which are all roughly the same size, around 10 kiloparsecs. Not too much different than the size of our own Milky Way galaxy. And remember, these are gas clouds, which are somewhat larger than the uh, area of the galaxy that's filled with stars. Now, if you calculate from the angular radius, that's what's observed, to the radius of the galaxies, the linear radius in kiloparsecs that they should have if the universe is not expanding, and redshift and distance are linearly proportional at all redshift, and you get the green dots. And as you can see, in each case, the green dots are comfortably above the minimum radius that these galaxies must have. But if you use the Big Bang expanding universe formula, which, as I've explained in previous videos, include this peculiar uh, optical illusion, that is caused by the galaxies being closer when they emitted their light. The galaxies are calculated to be two to four times smaller than the minimum radius, and that's those blue dots. So I call these the impossible galaxies. Now, of course, the galaxies are not really impossible. We've observed these data, so we know these galaxies with these observations exist. What's impossible is the predictions of the Big Bang theory. They make predictions that are absolutely contradicted by this independent measurement of the radius. Now, we don't expect the Big Bang supporters to look at this data when we get it published and hold up their hands and surrender from papers that have already been published about these problems, which are already evident in galaxies at the redshift of five, we pretty much know what they're going to say. They're going to say, well, this is actually measurements based on the abundance of carbon in these uh, massive clouds of mainly hydrogen. And maybe there's a lot more carbon than we think, and therefore a lot less hydrogen proportionately. So these are like smoky galaxies. The problem with that is that these galaxies are supposedly the progenitors of the galaxies that exist today. And if they had 
far more carbon than existing galaxies, what happened to that carbon? There's no way to disappear it or to sweep the soot under the rug. Again, there's an absolute contradiction with observation. And I and my colleague Ricardo Scarpa confidently predict that when ALMA turns its radio telescopes to the much more distant galaxies that have been observed by JWST, because the illusion gets bigger and bigger as you get to higher and higher redshifts, this contradiction of the impossible galaxies will only get worse. Instead of being two to four times smaller than they possibly can be, the Big Bang measurements of these more distant galaxies will be six to twelve times smaller. So these contradictions will get worse and worse. So stay tuned to see what will happen when the ALMA observations are actually published, which we expect to happen in the coming months.